Hi again, it's me, Emily Kachian, and today we'll continue again our discussion um, about uh, positional sacrifice. And today I prepared the game uh, back to 2005. That's one of my games. Uh, I played in a tournament by trying to get my uh, final Grandmaster norm. And um, I believe it was round, uh, round three, I faced um, Freedom Master Glixman David. Actually, right now he's under a different name. So, uh, and we played uh, French defense with a very interesting line. And actually, I invent one of the interesting ideas in that particular line. A few words about this uh, uh, Vinavi line on um, French defense. I personally believe that C3 is the better move than D2. Or e5, since that c3 give white more opportunity to create um, attacking chances, attacking opportunity. So, uh, in most situations, uh, white forced to attack on the king side, uh, which I prefer, and that's why I believe that c3 is more natural way to respond uh, versus uh, French defense. Excuse me, um, he went here, queen d7. I was trying to mention the main line here is c5. And here, a few words, uh, I believe that's the support of the main position. I've played it many times. And um, I believe queen g4 is much better response than uh, knight f3 or a4. So for people who's interested to play this line, um, I recommend to play queen g4, the sharpest way to, to play versus French defense. Now, the idea of queen d7, um, it's, um, it's kind of tricky. So what exactly black wants to do with playing queen d7, uh, black wants to protect the g7 pawn um, by queen. And in case of queen g5, black always has a five move. And most important, uh, black trying to still create double pawn structure, double, double pawn by C file, by capture C3. And then they're trying to play B6 first, trade the bishops, get away from the light bishop, and then get back to idea to attack the center by playing C5. So it's kind of slow motion plan, but um, again, that plan has also some funds. Uh, be popular at some point, um, in, uh, I believe it's um, late 90s. Uh, now, still people believe c5 is the main move, but I'm saying queen d7 is a possible way to play. There is two ideas similar as queen d7. It's queen d7 itself or to play b6, which is also kind of similar ideas to play. So, queen d7. Again, uh, a3 is kind of necessary move here to play. Um, because one of the secrets, uh, one of the points of playing against French defense in the Navi line, it's actually force black bishop to trade, to, to basically trade the bishop for the knight. Because black will have a problem with dark squares. And to create those problems, to use these dark squares, white need to take care of black dark bishop. And then create some game by these squares. So that's why a3 move is pretty much necessary. a3. I personally believe uh, the move also to be considered here is bishop f8. That's why in my personal opinion, if you're playing slow lines in French, in French, then it's better for you to play b6 here and bishop f8. This kind of makes sense. And as by myself, uh, I also play the line a couple times as a black. So this is much, much more interesting to play. Yeah, that's why I told F5. So here white has a couple of choices. Uh, first choice, which I made, I played here Queen G3. Another choice here, 
also pretty much interesting to play queen h5 check uh, to call g6 and then get back on d1. Or after queen f7, uh, probably you can, you can even take on f7 uh, and have a slightly better end game or go back on d1. The reason why I play queen g3, it's also concrete because I'm trying to still keep my eye on g7 pawn. So to delay development of the knight, because knight on g8 doesn't have uh, squares f6 and h6, and he can really stand on h7 as of now because g7 pawn hangs. And also the reason why I like g3 square for my queen, it's also to protect c3 square in case of possible attack by c file. So that kind of uh, multi-optional move, so I really like it. Queen g3, bishop a6. Well, this is much theory. Uh, there's many moves here besides of castle queen side, and I seen the moves here knight b8 with idea first to improve the knight, take care of a5 square, and then make a castle queen side. Uh, and the plan was here to play queen f7 with idea to play knight e7, uh, protect g7 pawn, and then move the king to the king side. Uh, my personal opinion, if anyone interested to play this line as a black, uh, my personal opinion, the best move here is knight b8, because uh, black is supposed to be more flexible, try to delay a little bit the castle, since the center is kind of locked down, to play first here, and then try to move the king to the queen side. That's my personal opinion. Uh, game, uh, moving the game, castle queen side, it's a might be too early, might be too early, since I have this a4 move. Again, Theory is saying a4 is maybe not the best line. Uh, they suggest here uh, not a4 move, uh, castle king side move, and a4. Uh, but I don't think so, a4 actually number one line. But the reason why I played a4, it's because I believed I had to. Uh, because I believed if I don't, then he will control a5 square. And I'm trying to play a4, play a5, strike, open the a-file, create a position on a3 for my bishop c1, because I believe since the, the king moved to the queen side, I like position to be here and then try to control this diagonal for my bishop. That's the reason why I, when I played a4 um, immediately. a4. Again, typical uh, typical capture by C pawn. Uh, a little bit unusual, but for French defense, it's normal because uh, Black have in the mind to play King B7, and then move the rook on C file and try to control C file. Maybe eventually by moving Knight on A5. So this is typical capture on B6 by C pawn. And here you go. Now we're talking about situation which happened in the game. So after the net a5, that's the very important moment here. I took on a5. Uh, again, uh, the, the, today's theme of the lecture is a position sacrifice, as I mentioned before. So the reason why I took on a5, it's actually pretty much positional reason. It wasn't really kind of tactical reason here. So why I captured on a5? Um, many reasons. First reason, I didn't like it if he plays uh, king b7, knight c4, rook c8, or knight c4, king b7, rook c8. Um, I had a problem with my bishop on c1 a little bit, and uh, most important, I don't see the way how I'm going to improve my knight e2. So when I took on a5, now it's a different story. Now my bishop on a3 will be very nice fit, right? And my knight from e2 could jump on f4, d3, and still attack c5 square. So besides, um, my queen will join, and my rook will have a opportunity to attack from b file or from a file. So for the exchange, I'm going to very rich game. So all my pieces become very active, and um, the king's position, I mean the black king position, getting very exposed. So, at this situation, again, we are playing middle game, we're not playing really end game. At this situation, my minor pieces getting a better job than 
major pieces of my opponent. And as you see, I was pretty much convenient here, and I, I thought uh, this episode, this sound, position of sacrifice. And I still believe uh, this is the best way to play against these positions. Bishop A3. Well, as you see, guys, uh, Black he still having some trouble uh, of development because, for instance, they still have a trouble to develop the knight uh, from G8 because, let's say, G7 pawn hangs. And if I, get, uh, if I take G7 pawn and my knight will send on E4, it's going to be completely full compensation, even though white will still stand much, much better because they will have a pawn for the exchange and plus better position. So Black has to be careful. King B7. Already having some kind of ideas, this kind of stuff. So it's really hard to find something concrete for black. Um, I, I thought one of the best ways for black would be to go uh, king a8 immediately, trying to uh, place the king in the corner and then trying to at some point fight for the b file. But the reason uh, after the game, my opponent told me uh, his concern was if he put king on a8 too early, it might be c4 and then uh, attacking by this diagonal, which is kind of true, I, I, could, I could do that. But still, I believe King E8 was the best practical uh, chance for Black. So they decided to go to the knight H6 to develop the knight. Still C4. Well, now problem is um, D5 pawn. So I think they're supposed to take on C4. And now what's going on, after rook b1 check, uh, the, play, the king cannot go on a8 because queen f3 check. So pretty much uh, it's tough choice already here. And if the only move here for black to go is king a6. And then knight d3. Well, this move has been missed if in, in my opponent calculation. But in fact, um, it's sort of a dangerous position for black to play. And obviously, when I played uh, rook takes a5, I haven't seen this line. Uh, I just, uh, like I said, I made a sacrifice, believing um, my position is so strong, it will be definitely a continuation for me to attack. And after another three, as you see, I have a big threat, uh, not c5 check, and the only way to defend this threat is to play uh, rook c8, because black cannot take the knight, since after queen d3, it's, it's a mate. So they went here, rook c8, the only move, trying to blockade the light squares. But after that c5 check, so uh, now we're talking about situation. I took my exchange back, and I'm still having strong attack. Uh, the enemy's king has no squares to go. The only uh, way I mean, the, the way how I'm supposed to finish the game is just simply bring my queen uh, to the queen side. So it's just something like here, you know, or here. So uh, this is pretty much too small situation because black cannot really um, fight back. They're kind of tight. So I thought here the best try would be for black to play rook c8, maybe at some point considering to, um, to give up exchange maybe. But it's still pretty much lost here, uh, I think. In the game, my opponent went here f4 by hoping to bring the knight on f5 and try to join the knight to the defense. But I'm not really care about the pawn on f4. So what I saw almost immediately, it's queen c3. Now, uh, problem is if you if you play, I mean. If you go queen d5, then after rook a1, there is no one who's going to a5 pawn and a simple win for uh, for white. So they have to play queen a4 in order to protect both pawns. And queen a4, too many pieces on a5, by the, by the way. After queen a4, I have this, queen b2. two attacks, I mean, uh, two squares under attacked, and that's really the big trouble for uh, for black. 
the only way to protect the squares is to play here. And then I have this. Now, suddenly, the c4 pawn under attack. And um, it's really, I mean, I, I don't see the way how black will protect. They went the only move here is queen d5 and queen a4. Finally, I reach this diagonal, and there is no one who can protect b5 square, and game is over. So again, um, you can say this is pretty much a tactical game, but it's not really exactly true, because um, when I sacrifice on a5, I haven't calculated this stuff that far, and obviously no one wouldn't. It just believes uh, when you will capture on a5, it's going to be fine position, absolute fine position for white because they will get so many squares for the bishop for the knight, and since uh, black's king is exposed, um, it has to be big compensation. It has to be a big opportunity for white to continue their attack, and that's why I did. And like I said, uh, it's pretty much intuitional sacrifice. I never, I never really tried to let's say, force myself to calculate that far. Only I saw when I take on a5, when I took on a5, uh, ba, let's say, bishop a3, only I saw I have so much opportunity to come to um, continue my attack, and that's why I did. And uh, that's the way how we're supposed to play, because like I said, I mentioned it in previous lecture, I keep saying the same thing uh, now, in middle game, it's important how active your pieces and what's the potential for your pieces, what's their productivity. So at this point, uh, minor pieces sometimes could be better than major pieces. So you don't be scared to sacrifice your material if you believe uh, your minor pieces doing better job, greater job than major pieces. And as you see in a couple of my games, uh, it works out perfect. And in fact, we have much better players who actually keep doing this thing uh, all the time. Uh, as one of the best players who are actually uh, doing this sacrifices positional, it's uh, Alex Shirov uh, from Spain. Uh, we have Morozevich, obviously, also. But I think the Shirov, as of today, one of the best players who uh, represent this stuff. Okay, guys, good luck, and I hope you like it, and we will continue our discussion next time. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you.